What's up, guys? I just got back from the Milwaukee Regional Championships, where I finished 59th out of almost 1,100 competitors, which is a pretty good record, pretty good finish. Um, this is the list that I played, the 60 cards. Uh, let me talk to you guys about my thought process about why I played it, um, what this deck does for the metagame, um, and yeah, all that stuff. So we have one more tournament, one more major, I guess, if you are uh, not traveling to any of the SPEs over in uh, Cape Town or stuff like that, in the... Um, Scarlet and Violet format, uh, and so heading up to Milwaukee, I didn't really have time to test. I had just come off of Hartford, where I played Sablezard, and I think probably did not play it as well as I should have, uh, and went 5-3-1. So I, in my mind, I was thinking that I just wanted to play a deck that doesn't really require too much thinking, and so I flew into Chicago on Thursday, um, was staying with Xander Perot. We just kind of hung out, um, didn't really test too much on Thursday. Uh, like, I played this versus Kyogre, and I was going super 50-50, and so I was trying to figure out, like, what to do. What cards to change uh, and so i just took out the karen's uh, conviction for sharon's care and i was talking to my senior over in europe rune and we were just kind of like putting together 60. i really did not want to play alakazam and i was like i don't really want this card but then he was like you need this for dragonite you need this for this scenario and guardian i was like yeah 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 you're probably right so i kept it we decided to play a drapion for the mew matchup we figured um with the drapion we should be able to actually be fav favorable into mew uh, maybe fusion is still a little bit rough but we ended up testing the matchups both time, and I think I went 4-0 against DTE Mew, and he went 4-0 against Fusion Mew, and we decided, sure, that seems reasonable enough. So, come around to Friday morning. Friday, um, John is here. We head over to um, Milwaukee. A lot of players, like Reagan and the gang, are still on Lugia. And then I'm sitting there like, what do I want to play? I don't really want to play Lugia. Um, I want to play an Arc variant, so I'm, I'm kind of mulling some variants with Locke. And um, Locke is trying to sell me on Arc Tina. And I end up not being sold on it. And I'm not going to lie, Umbreon is my favorite Pokemon, so I really wanted to put Umbreon on my Limitless page. Uh, yes, I know it's a little bit cocky to say that I wanted him there, uh, but I, I you know, I put my money where my worth is, and I, I made it there. So, counts make sense. Everything was just basically a cut and, cut and paste from Nathan Stratford's top 8 list. Um, only things we added were the single strike energy to hit for 240 with Duraludon, uh, and then Umbreon is a single strike energy plus a DTE can also one-shot a Mew. Um... Yeah, list felt good. Everything felt good. Alkazam did not come and play once. Alkazam actually, in every game it would have been relevant, was prized. So I'll jump right into that right now. So here are my 15 rounds. I started the day off against Ian Stroffer. Um, Ian was a VGC player, and I think Ian in the first game made a couple of mistakes, uh, and I was not setting up super well. And he just kind of made a couple of mistakes where it was like forgetting to roar the sword, or uh, refinementing away some cards that he would have needed for combo pieces, or having a penny in hand when he was looking for energy to retreat on like a, a like a Greninja, and Ian just kind of played a little bit new, obviously, and I ended up taking that one. Um, game two, Ian just didn't set up, and it was all on me, you know, I just capitalized and won that game. Round two, I went against Ryan. Ryan was playing Maridon. Um, game one, Ryan got the turn one KO going second on my Arceus, uh, with the rope, or not, uh, on my Duraludon with the rope, which made life really hard, because then I had to hit into the Maridon for 180, um, which didn't really matter, like that 180 damage doesn't really stick. It does if I have Alakazam, but I prized Alakazam. So game one was a quick one. Um, game two, uh, I was able to just like get off to the races early and take prizes, and I won that way. Game three, we were both kind of bricking, but Ryan got out of the brick first, uh, set up his board. I put myself in a position, I opened Drapion also. I put myself in a position to take out his um, Flaffy, with Arceus and lost on it, or not Fluffy, um, Raichu, and then in his like four card hand he had Serena, or five card hand he had Serena, Sky Seal Stone, second Raichu to close out the game on my Duraludon VMAX, I was on the bench, uh, at this point I, I felt like I had stabilized and my board was just an Arceus and a Duraludon, and I felt like with those two cards I could just kind of um, take my remaining four prizes, uh, and then I did not realize if I see all the Sky Seal Stone. So uh, I think a bad matchup overall anyway, and I think Ryan drew pretty well um, to not have to use Forest Seal Stone in any of those matchups. So props to him. Uh, run through was against Joseph Harding. Um, both games, uh, I was like one turn off of beating Joseph. I really couldn't touch his hand in, in any of the games because like I couldn't find my judges early. I couldn't find pieces early to play the game. Uh, and both games, like Joseph had like a really big hand and I couldn't really stop the Kyogre. Three gates were gone both games pretty early. And I was like, there's no really way I can punish this. Um, yeah, so basically I got Kyogre by one turn both times and there's not much I could do because both games I got like an Arceus horned onto my bench and I was like, what do I do with this guy? Like, I can't do anything. Um, game two ended like as time was getting called. So, um, 
if we did have time for a third game, it would have tied for sure. Um, but yeah, props to Joseph. Both now I'm one two. I got to win five in a row to make day two. Uh, rough, rough, rough road ahead of me. Uh, round four, I hit Michael Laundry, who was playing like the single prize version of Kyogre. And both games, I just kind of like put my lost city down. It stuck. And then I judged early, and I just just started chasing attackers with my Umbreon and stuff. And so as soon as I got rid of like both of Michael's Crime Rants both games, and then I Sharon's cared. Um, it just was like really scary, like hard for him to play the game once I got Zamazenta off the board and Snorlax off the board. Yeah, no, I think I just was able to um, do that. Yeah, uh, his Articuno never came into play. Uh, I mean, I think he played one. I don't know actually, but he was able to rally back to five one three. So good for him. But he did start. Yeah, oh uh, one three. So a really rough record. Then I went against Wyatt, um, and Wyatt uh, in in the one game I lost against Wyatt, I did end up prizing the Alkazam. On the turn, I would have needed it to move the damage up with Dragonite. Um, so I ended up just kind of uh, doing the same thing I did against the other Lost Boxes, judge properly, um, just attack turn after turn after turn. I just set up Arceus, Arceus, Duraludon. I Sharon's care one of the Arceuses at some point. Um, and then that's my entire game plan. Like If the price trade is going favorably, I can put something else back down, try not to discard Pokemon if possible. Um, they don't really have hand disruption, so I can wait to do stuff like Ultra Ball for Fish for game um, at the end of the game. So it worked out in my favor uh, in that round. Um, and then round 6 1 against June. June, they were playing a Gudra. Uh, Gudra seems to be a pretty easy matchup for this deck. In the first game, I actually prized both Drill on Vs, but I was able to open the game with uh, my Single Strike Energy and an Umbreon in the active. So I mean looked for 50 on a Comfe, uh, and they did not attack with Cram that turn so i went ahead and um moved 20 from the comfe to a gudra that had already been powered up or like beginning to get powered up and then i moved into an arceus uh, and then i used trinity charge to or trinity nova maybe or charge maybe it was charge i used trinity charge to set up my board um and then they attacked into me with gudra and then i rope moved 20 more bossed up the um gudra with two with 40 on it, so with 230 HP left, and got the Choice Belt with um, Starbirth to one-shot the Gudra. And then I took two more prizes on some random guys, and then I went boss, boss, uh, not boss, boss. Um, I went hit into Gudra after uh, they Moisture Starred, and then they Moisture Starred, and then I just hit again for game, basically. I got the Duraldon set up at this point, and I got it. And then game two, I just got the Duraldon up, and June basically got nothing going, and so it was kind of uh, disappointing for them, and I just got there. Uh, against Juan, game one, it was a Fusion Mew. Juan was playing Fusion Mew. Game one, Juan basically set up, and I could not actually win the game. Game two, I actually won pretty handedly, I want to say. And then game three, I was pretty scared because Juan chose to go second, and I was pretty sure he was going to bop me. Um, and then Juan ended up prizing Meloetta, uh, when he had like the pieces of turn one attack my RCS for game, not game, but like basically like almost game. Um, I was thinking like, oh no, I don't have to start birth for Raihan. And like, that's my setup for the turn. Like Raihan into like getting another Pokemon, like Umbreon and put it on the bench and see what happens. Um, but luckily I didn't get knocked out. So I got to go get Adventures Discovery and play the game from there. Put a, a Drapion and Umbreon on my bench. He ends up actually bossing the Drapion and pathing um, and knocks out the Drapion. And I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking, I think he meant to boss the Umbreon, the baby Umbreon, because I didn't evolve it. Uh, I missed the evolution that turn. Um, like, boss the Umbreon path and just say, like, hey, you don't have Drapion. Um, because the Umbreon just came up and won the game the next turn for me. So, a uh, lot, of, lot of weird decisions, but I think definitely uh, a close game for me. Uh, round 8, I was up against Andrew Dombrowski. This was, like, probably the quickest set I played all tournament, where game 1, Andrew opened T-Tar passed, I attacked... He passed, I attacked for game. Game two, um, he set up, got an Urshi down. I bossed up the Urshi, I hit into it. He Urshi KO'd my, um, or he retreated the Urshi like manually and KO'd my RCS with Titar. Uh, and then I just went into Duraludon, boss up the Urshi, and the game ended on the spot. So, um, quick uh, 6 2 now. I go up against Zach Umstead and I offer the ID. I just didn't want to play. Um, I didn't really believe in the deck to win the tournament, to be completely honest, and I knew that it was an RCS mirror because Zach had mentioned it. Um, and so I just took the ID and we moved on. 
Now I gotta go 501 in day two, something I've done before, but I, did, I wasn't really confident with this deck because there's not too much outplay potential with um, Arceus uh, Durambryon. You have one real decision, it's Starbirth. Once Starbirth is done, you don't really get too much more decision-making uh, power for the rest of the game. Good and bad. Uh, good for players because the deck does play itself sometimes. Bad for me because I do want to have some outplay potential and play the game. Uh, round 10 against Greg A. Fortier. He was playing Arctina. Game one was Tina Pass. I just knocked it out. Uh, game two was like a Tina Pass as well, but no energy, nothing. Like Basically, Greg did not get anything up going. Greg really just... It was like the worst draws I'd seen out of an RCS deck in a long time. Round 11 was against Ben Cryer. Uh, the first game came down to the wire that I was able to take. He was playing Arctina. Um, the second game, uh, my opening hand was Duraldon and seven unplayable cards, and I just conceded immediately. Um, I just didn't want to play that. Uh, round or game three, uh, it actually came down to the wire where I had game in hand with a boss the following turn, and Ben ends up judging me, and his judge ends up sticking, and I don't find the pieces I need. Um, and I'm like, well, he's got a Bavaro. He didn't draw too many cards last turn with the judge. Like, I think he just barreled and then he judged or something like that in like some some order of that um so i was like okay i can't really play any supporters for my hand I, I don't really have anything left and so i just you know attacked into him and i said like you have the boss you have the boss and he just showed me like boss dte um to close out the game and i was like yep you got it so i lost to ben congrats to ben for making top four though like it was a it was an awesome run like the game came down to like one turn basically like i think i researched and found the boss the next turn like i would have had it but um awesome awesome job to ben uh, then round 12, we go up against Yoshi. Yoshi is like a long-time player. He's like always likes to play Goofy decks. He's playing Intel VMAX with Urshi, which is really funny. The first game, I actually break super, super, super bad, giving Urshi like, uh, or giving Yoshi infinite time to just like take four prizes before I start playing the game, and I can't really play from there. So game one, I lose. Game two, I just target down the Remoraid on turn two with my Arceus, and he concedes pretty quickly because the deck needs, needs Octillery to kind of function. Uh, and then game three, um, he has a pretty... I have a pretty bricky hand and he actually manages to rapid or like hit my um, draw it on for 180 with Urshi. Uh, I end up voloing it and hitting into the Urshi. He then rapid flows, um, basically putting a ton of damage on both my RCSs, cleans up the RCSs, and then like I, I can't find Sharon's at this point, so I have two RCSs in play uh, because of Horn. And, uh, now I'm stuck. I have one Duralon that has to win the game. And uh, he basically powers up two Intellion Maxes with basic waters. And that just means he gets to chain enough attacks to close out the game on me. So that sucked. It should have been a good matchup. But I think I drew pretty poorly and Yoshi do pretty well. Uh, but that is that is the nature of the card game sometimes. Um, so now I'm out of like anything besides top 32 potentially. Uh, round 13 opens Vikas. Uh, he's playing Alugia. Game 1, he ends up smoking me. Um, game two, I end up getting him, and then game three, he has a pretty bad start, like a really, really bad start, and I just bring up the Urshi, knock it out, and that's the game. Like, the turn he puts on Urshi, he's like, you have to just not have a boss, and I'm like, yeah, I have it. Um, we were talking about it in game two, I think he could have won game two, if he just put the Urshi on one turn earlier, uh, knowing that I could never Trinity Nova in that spot, or I have to Trinity Nova in that spot, like, I've never attacked with Duraldon, so the Urshi is safe-ish, I guess, um, but he just didn't, so. Round 14, I'm going Edwin, Edwin has like, he's playing the same 60 that Henry Brand used to win the tournament. Um, game one, Edwin has the biggest brick I've ever seen. Um, literally, it's like a draw pass game over. Um, round game two, it comes down to the wire as well, but Edwin just like cannot save himself off of any judges. I end up umbrioning up the baby guardy and taking it out, putting it in a loss zone, and then I take out a Curlia, and then I think the game comes just like to a screeching halt when he knows he can't like do anything else. Like he doesn't have any more pieces to close out this game. Uh, round 15, I go against JNL. Uh, he's playing Arctura, so basically we're playing Mirror. Um, in the first game, uh, we just said uh, gentlemen's, of course. Like one of us could make top thirty-two. He gets thirty-third, unfortunately. But game one is JNL gets the RCS Energy Judge, like DTE Judge, on turn one, and I just don't find the V Star, so he just sets up and beats me. And then game two, it's like my opening hand is like six energies RCS, and I'm like, oh, dude, and I top deck and it's like a switch, and I'm like, okay, attach DTE pass. And then he doesn't judge me. He sets up his board with adventurers. I draw for turn. It's like ultra ball. Not ultra. It's like nest ball. So I go nest ball for uh, another Arceus. I Trinity charge the board. Um, he goes draw. Um, going to draw it on. Just take the knockout on me. And then I draw. And then I just concede. Because my hand is completely 
completely dead. So that was cool. Um, the games I got to play, I got to win, I think. The games that, a lot of the games that you don't find RC Synergy turn one, you lose. You lose pretty handedly. Um, so I don't really know if I like RC Stacks. I'm, I'm really not a fan. Um, it was a fun experience. I enjoyed playing Duraldon. Big Umbreon guy. You know, I'm a huge Umbreon fan. But um, that all being said, I think that uh, I would not play Arceus again. This is a cool list, cool time. Added something fun to my Limitless page. Uh, you guys can see it here. Arceus, Gerald, and Umbreon. Um, in addition to all my weird Reggies and stuff this season. It's a very weird set of decks I've played this year. I'll do a season recap at the end of the year uh, for you guys before I head into Worlds. Um, let me know how you, you know want to approach that but thank you guys for watching as always please like and subscribe if you're buying new cards from paldea evolved or even old cards that you need for coming up for naic remember to use my tcg player affiliate link in the comments below in the description below sorry uh it does help out the channel anything you guys use it for it's just going to go right back into the channel so thank you i appreciate it and uh, i'll catch you guys on the flip